Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a simple and accurate reverse geocoder with a Raspberry Pi Pico W and a GPS module in just a matter of a few simple steps. Now, reverse geocoding is a technique where GPS coordinates, typically latitude and longitude, are used to determine a corresponding geographic address. It has various applications, including asset tracking, location-based alerts, travel logging, and much more. Today we'll be using the Neo 6M, a highly accurate and cost-effective GPS module that includes an antenna. It can seamlessly be paired with the Raspberry Pi Pico W and MicroPython to relay signals allowing the Pico W to process them. Now in today's tutorial, I'll be walking you through the code side of things to the physical setup and also how to integrate the OpenCage API, which will allow us to convert the longitude and latitude to actual addresses. Finally, if you haven't already, before we get into it, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, especially if you are a beginner. There are several tutorials on this channel and IoT and full stack that can be useful for your projects and your use cases. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Do not shy away. And enough being said, guys, I do not want to waste any time. Let's jump into it and first talk about the physical setup and components we need to get this project started. Okay, so the components we'll be using today is this Neo 6M GPS module, which I'll link down below. Now, this GPS module does not come soldered so make sure you have a soldering iron kit to solder the headers on also this antenna that i have attached right now does not come attached so do not be alarmed if it's not you just have to take the end and snap it on to the antenna section as you see i did here and the other things we need for today on top of the gps module are a breadboard so i highly recommend using a breadboard for organization purposes some jumper wires a pico w and a power supply Okay, so once you have your module soldered, as you see I do already, we can go ahead and snap it into the breadboard. I already put the headers where I wanted them to for today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually snap this on here, okay? So I'll explain what each row is very quickly. So the first row there in blue is just a 3.3 volts pin from the Pico W. So this is just the the pin 36 as you see there in blue so that is connected to the pico w there now what we have in in yellow is just a ground pin on the pico w i am just using pin 38 so that's that's that and the other two pins we have are for uart communication so this is just to enable serial communication to the raspberry pi pico w so that is the the blue pin which is which connects from the rx pin on the the gps module so this is the rx pin that is the receiver pin and the receiver pin on the gps module actually connects to pin zero on the pico w so that is the very first pin over here and that is the tx pin so rx goes to tx and in green we have the the rx pin from the pico w actually goes to the tx pin on the gps module so we just need those four connections and once we have everything you should see a green light here so we are good in terms of the physical setup for this board to start receiving signals okay so first things first before we jump into the actual code we just have to get an api key from the geocoder or the reverse geocoder we'll be using today we'll be using open cage incredibly simple and popular uh, geocoding api which has a really nice free tier so it gives us 2500 usages per day more than what most people need for experimentation purposes of course if you want to go to production level you probably want to investigate some of their pricing which is of course very generous and actually really cheap com compared to many geocoders or reverse geocoders and so once we are on open cage we just want to go and get an api key so you can go ahead and create an account i already did and once we do that we can go ahead and log in with that account i use gmail and they make it so simple to get the information you need all you need is an api key so if you just go to your dashboard you go to geocoding api you can go ahead and get this api key now we'll be pasting this in our micropython code be sure to keep this api key safe especially if you are using this for production purposes because if someone gets their hands on this api key they can go ahead and exhaust all of your api calls and cost you money potentially if you are using this in production so keep this safe i'll go ahead and delete this after this video it doesn't really matter because i'm not paying for it but just keep in mind this is sensitive information so that being said guys let's jump into the code and explain what we are doing there okay so now that we have our physical setup and our open cage api key let's just talk about the script we'll be running today it's just one script and i'm going to assume at this point you have some environment to code on micropython on the raspberry pi pico w i'm using thani for today so hopefully you have your environment set up as well 
well. And if you like, this script is provided for free on shillatech.com. So just go to shillatech.com and go to the blog section if you do not feel like copying each line tediously as we go along in today's tutorial. So I'm going to do my best to explain this script quickly and at a high level so you get some high level understanding of what is going on here because there are too many lines of code to go into each detail about each line. That'll take several hours. So let me just do my best here and explain what is going on. So firstly, we just have some imports. These are just pretty standard imports in MicroPython. And on line 18, what we are doing is we are just initializing UART communication for the GPS module. So we're connecting to the module over those respective pins that we talked about at the beginning of the tutorial. So if you made the same connections as me, this should be a no changer. So you don't have to change that line of code. And going down, once we have that UART communication established with the GPS module, the first thing we do is we want to connect to the internet because we need the internet connection to send in a request to OpenCage over the internet to access their API, get a response in return. So let's just go ahead and pass our internet name and our internet password as you see here. One thing I wanna make note of is some beginners get confused about this on my channel. You do not have to save your password in a config. I just do this for security purposes. You can go ahead and put your raw internet password here if you like, and you can go ahead and delete this if your password is not in a config file. Next thing, once we have a connection to the internet, we want to start reading data from the GPS. So this is the first main function we'll be calling that does a, a lot of the, the meat of the calculation. So in this read GPS, we have one function flag which we can pass, which is the read coordinates only flag. Now this flag is a Boolean true or false. If we set this flag to false, what's going to happen is there's some logic here that if it's false, it'll just print the raw NMEA signals from the GPS module. So briefly explaining what NMEA is at the top of this code, if you've never heard of it, NMEA is National Marine Electronics Association. It's a standard for formatting GPS data. So that's what this NEO 6M uses. And if that flag is false, it'll just literally print these raw signals here. So it'll just be different lines of different bits of information from each signal. Otherwise, if we set the flag to true, which it is right now, it's just going to hone in on the GPGGA signal. And this signal actually provides for us the latitude and longitude, which is all we really care about for today's video. And that is the global positioning system fixed data signal. And we can take that latitude and longitude from that sentence and just pass it to the open cage API. So two flags there. One is if you set it to false, it'll just show you all the information, the raw information. Otherwise, if it's true, that'll actually do the reverse geocoding. So in this read GPS function, what's happening exactly is we are just taking those raw bytes of data provided to us over the serial communication. So as your sensor is running, it's providing to you bytes of data. We do some interpretation to that. We convert it to a string. We do some parsing. And we also call this function validate checksum. So this validate checksum function is important, but you do not have to change this function at all. What's happening in this validate checksum function is it takes those raw sentences we parsed from the serial data, and it's going to do a checksum validation. So these NMEA sentences include a checksum at the end, which is, a, which is an integer. And this integer is used to do a sanity check on the data they provide for us. So if the data is corrupted, the checksum will fail and we'll skip that, that line of data. But this is a pretty standard method when it comes to serial communication with, with GPS modules to use a checksum to validate the data we are getting. So we, we call this validate checksum to do some integrity check of the data because sometimes if the GPS module is in an area with a lot of electronic signals, or something is corrupt in the signal, this checksum will start to fail, and we do not want to interpret bad signals from the GPS, that wouldn't make sense. So we use the checksum they provide to us, and I provided all the logic there to actually use that checksum correctly. Now, if the checksum is correct, and next, if the read coordinates only flag is true, that is, we only want to read the GPGGA signal, what is happening is it's going to hone in on that, that signal there, and then it's going to take that line they provide to us, so it's going to take the, the line of GPGGA text they give us, which has various bits of information, and it's going to pass it to this extract coordinates function. So it's just going to take that GPGGA sentence, and it's going to take the latitude, and the longitude, and the altitude, which we really don't need, but I just wanted to show you that we also get altitude, which is pretty cool, and it's actually pretty accurate as well. 
And then once we get the latitude and the longitude from the raw sentence, we do a little bit more processing, which I'm not going to talk too much about here, but we convert the latitude and the longitude to formats that the, that the open cage API key needs. And once we have the, the real latitude and the real longitude for the open cage API, we just call this reverse geocode function. So we pass the latitude and the longitude to reverse geocode and up here in that function, literally all we're doing is we're passing in our API key. So be sure you have your API key pasted in here. This is my API key. So if you have the wrong API key, this will not work. And we're just going to pass the latitude and the longitude, which is given into the function to their, to their API. And if everything is successful, they will provide to us a 200 status code and we can parse the signal and we can get a bunch of information. In today's code, we are just getting the city and the country. And that's pretty much it in terms of reverse geocoding. So once again, if that is true, we will get the reverse geocoding working. And also there's some additional logic in this code that if a GPS signal is not available, it'll just print GPS signal not available. If you are not near a window or an open sky, there's a high chance you will see this GPS signal not available if the read coordinates only flag is true. So we're gonna talk about that more in a second and we're gonna run our code near a window. And I'll just run this briefly before I even get to an open sky setup, but let's just go ahead and run this to show you what is going on here. So right now I'm just at my desk in a high rise. So I should get GPS signal not available. So just let that run real quick. And you see right away GPS signal not available. That makes sense. We are just trying to find that GPGGA signal, which we are finding, but it's not providing to us any information that is latitude and longitude. So that makes sense right now. Let's go ahead and stop and I'll show you the, the false flag. And that's just going to show us all of the sentences, all of the NMEA sentences. So go ahead, you see it's providing all this information. It, it looks like gibberish, especially if this is your first time seeing GPS signals, but that's what it is doing. So that's pretty much us just trying to run the script from inside my high rise. Let's go ahead and change our setup to get the script properly working. Had to go off camera to run my code successfully near a window. You should point your antenna upwards as you see here to an open sky ideally when using this module. Okay, so now that our GPS is properly oriented towards the sky, let's go ahead and run the script again. First as read coordinates as false, read coordinates only. This will print the raw GPS signals and this is just for demonstration purposes to show you all the information these GPS modules provide to us. I leave it up to you to learn more about this and if you are interested to interpret more of this information as you like, really a lot of it is not pertinent to us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click stop and we could just set this flag to true and this will just print the information we care about for geocoding. So you can see if everything is successful, your GPS does have a signal and your open cage API key is correct. You will see lines like this with your city and country. So mine is correct here with Chicago and the United States. So that is pretty cool. And all we have to do was flip that flag to true. Now, if you are interested in more information than just the city and the country, open cage does give us more information. You can go ahead and just print the whole payload data.get results to see everything they provide. If you do want more specific information about your reverse geocoded location. So I hope you got everything working up to this point. That's pretty much everything we, we have in terms of the script. So that's a wrap for today's tutorial. As you saw, we were able to get our location very seamlessly using the Raspberry Pi Pico W and a GPS module. If you got it working for you or you learned something new, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot and allow us to continue making more engaging content for the IoT community. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below or suggestions as well. Many of the videos on this channel come from suggestions from you guys in the comment section down below. So do not shy away from that once again the full content is provided to you and the full code for free and more detail actually is on shillatech.com so you can go to the blog section and see everything for free as well stay tuned guys thanks for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial